Dr. Cook back again for MS200. This lesson we're going to be talking about uh, an introduction to course of action development. All right, so we completed up uh, paragraphs one and two in our op orders uh, so far. So what we already know from that is we've, we know information from our mission analysis, what's going on with the light and weather, the enemy situation, friendly situation, our civilian situation. All right, we understand our platoon mission statement and we've looked at our higher commander's intents and purposes and what comes out of all that, right? So now we're gonna start in with paragraph three of the op order where we have to start building our own plan, okay? So that now what do we do, right? We're going to develop a plan that takes all that previous information and builds how we're going to execute our mission. All right. What types of operations are we going to conduct in accordance with doctrine? All right. If we look back to our troop leading procedures to give an idea, where are we? All right. So the make a tentative plan part started out with some mission analysis and we looked at that met TC and did a bunch of situational analysis. And that kind of spills over into a little bit of what we're going to start today with our, with our analysis in AGADAP. It gives us uh, information, which then goes into our course of action development. Okay, and we'll talk about how we go through code development. This is part of making our tentative plan in the troop leading procedures. All right, so on the screen here is our steps for course of action development. All right, we're going to analyze relative combat power, generate options, array initial forces, develop a scheme and maneuver, assign headquarters and then prepare, prepare a COA statement and sketches. All right. If you look at the first letters on those to help us remember them, because you need to know these steps is our acronym AGADAP. All right. So AGADAP is all where it's at for our course of action development. So let's walk through some of these steps here. All right. So we're going to start out with analyzing relative combat power. Right? That's about thinking about what's the enemy's weaknesses and what are my strengths? How do I exploit those enemy weaknesses and make sure that my strengths get partnered up with them? Right. So in this step, we might look at our enemy task org and red checkbook and our friendly task org to try and look at uh, how do we compare to each other? Right? What is my enemy? What am I? And how do I pair those two things together in the best way possible? Right? So we want to be thinking about that. And the next step is going to generate options, right? This is kind of like uh, in other situations where we might think of brainstorming. But we're going to be a little more deliberate about it, all right? So that we can uh, figure out how do I focus our combat power to get to the purpose we have, and how do my subordinates uh, need to do things to support the platoon, and then what's the best way for everybody to do this, all right? We're going to start out with looking at our doctrinal requirements, okay? Because if, if we go to doctrine, we'll get some information. All right. So when we're doing our offensive tasks, all right, doctrine breaks that down into some different ways to do that. There's a movement to contact, there's an attack, there's exploitation, we can do a pursuit. These are different kinds of offensive tasks. All right. They're all designed for different things. So depending on the situation, both what my commander told me to do and what the situation on the ground is, uh, some of these offensive tasks will make sense and some of them might not. And that'll help me narrow down on what options I have for how to do things. So let's start with this one and think we're going to do some kind of attack. All right. We're going to destroy our enemy forces. Or we're trying to seize terrain. Or we're trying to secure terrain. If I got given those tasks, I need to attack. Now within our uh, offensive types of missions, we have forms of maneuver. We'll learn more about that in some upcoming lessons. All right. But those are things like envelopment, turning movement, infiltration, penetration, frontal attack, flank attack. All right, these are all different ways of conducting that attack. Um, and we'll learn the specifics of those, but you end up picking one of those forms and saying that's going to be a course of action I can take. All right, as we're generating our options, we're going to want to make sure we determine what the decisive point of the fight is. Okay, so what is this decisive thing that we're talking about here, right? This is about what is decisive to the operation. So if you look at this picture here, on your left, you can see the start of the fight, right? We're going to make a landing, right? We've initiated the battle. And then over on the right, they've got total victory and we finished things out, all right? Now, when we go from one to the other, all right, you've got combat in the middle. Things happen. A lot of things happen. That's where we make our plan. We've got different phases. Different events are going to happen. We're going to have some key things. We want to make sure it happens. We get the breach open. We 
uh, have forces on the objective. We've lifted and shifted fires, right? We initiate our cleanup operations, and then we finally are, are done with our, our operation, right? So there's all these events that happen, all right? But what is this decisive point that we're talking about here, all right? The question is, what actions of yours will ultimately tip the scale so that you win the fight? Because some of those things that happen, they have to happen, all right? They're part of the process, but they're not going to make sure that you win the battle, all right? And when we're talking about the decisive point, that's the point where even though the battle's not over yet, things are set such that you're going to accomplish your purpose. At that point, the enemy doesn't have much they can do to win the battle. It would be some kind of strange one in a million, they won the lottery chance that they managed to change the way things go. All right. In, in every battle, there's going to be some point where once those things happen, all right, and you reach that decisive point, the outcome is kind of determined as long as you just keep fighting through it and you're, you're in cleanup at that point, really, or not cleanup, but you're going to finish the fight out. All right. That's your decisive point. We'll talk more about that in class. Make sure you understand. All right, and really it's all about when you have that irreversible momentum. The enemy can't stop you at that point. You're going to win. All right, which takes us into our next COA dev step. Uh, we develop a concept of operation. All right. So once we did that, we had those forces because, hey, the envelopment force is going to do this. All right. We lay out what is the vision of how the operation goes from start to end? What is my end state? What's my concept of how all those things work? And again, at this point, I haven't even put any names or numbers to it. All right. I'm just talking about my forces and my elements and what can happen to make this plan happen. All right. That moves us into the next step, which is assign our leadership, assign our squad responsibilities. How are we going to make this happen? All right, last step in the code dev steps is to produce our concept statement or sketch and sketch. All right, now here's just an example of what that's going to come out looking like. All right, we're going to have a whole nother lesson just about how to do our, our sketch. But I want to give an idea of what that is. We're going to be able to give a picture. We're going to have a consolidated statement that's going to go into our op order. All right, now once we get our plan together, all right, there's some criteria that we got to make sure that all courses of action meet, all right? Every course of action needs to be suitable, feasible, acceptable, distinguishable, and complete, all right? Does it go with our commander's intent? Is it doctrinally sound? Do we understand the risks? Is it simple enough? Is it different from the other plans? And we want to keep things simple but detailed, all right, that we know exactly what's going to happen, all right? Um, and there's more detailed explanation of what all these are, but just make sure you have an idea of meeting all of these criteria and what they are. All right, so to go back, we've got Agadap. All right, step one, analyze relative combat power. Step two, generate your options. Three, array of initial forces. Four, develop a scheme and maneuver. Five, assign your headquarters. And then six, prepare COA statement and sketches. All right, Agadap, all right, get to know it. This is how what we're gonna be going through uh, for the rest of this block on paragraph three.